Welcome to my channel. This is another episode of Daily News Clips. But I want to explain a little bit about what my channel is about. Every day I produce an episode of Daily News Clips where I try to bring you articles that you may not otherwise be aware of with information that you may not be privy to. And then I also do five requests of songs that my viewers have asked me to react to. In addition to that, I will sometimes add on extra reactions that I've selected myself. For example, right now I'm featuring Randy Travis, and I've also been doing a second bonus video uh, of selected artists like Gigi Vibes and Diana Ankudinova, Emma Cook, those types, where I want to, I just want to add on a little bit extra because people have mentioned it in the comments and I don't want them to have to wait because I've got uh, 750 requests. So it's going to take a while to get to all those. So that's what my channel is about. Before I get into the daily news today, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel. I, I really do appreciate every person that comes and watches my videos and subscribes to my channel. I really do appreciate all of you and I'm very thankful for for your uh, viewership and for your support of me. So today I have several articles. Uh, the first one I'm not going to show you on the screen. The title of it is True Tales of Transactional Journalism from the Trenches. It's a Cheryl Atkinson article and basically Cheryl is uh, providing evidence of news reporters who get in bed with their sources and therefore are no longer objective. This is a real problem, especially in Washington, D.C., where what they call beat reporters come to Washington, D.C. to cover a certain beat, like, say, for example, the State Department, and they get so familiar and so close to the sources that they have that they're developing to get their stories that they end up just parroting whatever the source tells them without doing any fact checking at all. And this is especially true when the sources information that they're providing fits with the narratives that the reporter is interested in telling. So she provides a lot of information in that article about that. And you're welcome to read that. As I always do, I put all the links to these stories in the, in the description field of my video so that you can have access to them and follow up if you want to. The second article is entitled Censorship Files, entitled, boy, I'm stumbling all over my words today, entitled Censorship Files, We Will Not Be Intimidated from Continuing Our Mission in 2024. This is an article by Matt Taibbi, and I'm just going to read you one little line in here. The following documents do, however, show that participants in the original Election Integrity Partnership planned to continue and expand their program into 2024 and beyond. Oh, whoopee. What this means is the people that brought you Russiagate, which turned out to be absolutely, completely false, are, are still in business and still trying to spread disinformation and misinformation while insisting what they're doing is protecting us poor souls out here in the hoi polloi from the misinformation and disinformation that we're being fed. In other words, there are betters and they know better than we do what we should know and so they want to make sure that we know those things. <laughs> oh boy, I'm telling you. The world we live in. This next article is entitled Censorship Files. It's a follow-up, and there will be several of these by Matt, which you can follow on your own if you want. We have very little evidence about what works. On, 11th, on April 11th, 2021, the University of Washington's Kate Starbird sent a letter to former FBI agent Clint Watts, whom racket readers will recognize as the face of the ill-fated Hamilton 68 dashboard. Funded by the Alliance for Security Democracy, whose board contains former heads and deputy heads of agencies like the CIA, NSA, and DHS, 
Hamilton 68 spawned hundreds of incorrect stories about alleged Russian bot activity. In the Twitter files, we found executives reverse-engineered the dashboard, discovering it was full of people encountered unconnected to Russia and argued it should be called out for the bullshit that it is. Now, you have to understand how this system works. People work in government, in the CIA and the NSA and places like that. They're in intelligence, and uh, although their job is supposed to be to provide the, the president with accurate information about what's going on in the world, it turns out that basically what they're doing is trying to feed disinformation to the United States of America people, to the citizens of this country. And when they leave those organizations, they go to work for uh, nonprofit organizations, nonprofit in the sense that they're filing as a nonprofit, which are funded by our government. So our government is paying these organizations to do the work that they're doing. And the work that they're doing is spreading disinformation, telling us lies. And we're paying for it with our tax dollars. Finally, I have a couple of items for you, which uh, I thought I would, I would bring you because it's an example of how corrupt and how completely unconstitutional our government is now. This is the headline, Biden administration canceling student loans for another 160,000 borrowers. Now, the date on this article, May 22nd, 2024. That's two days ago, right? Okay, now look at this article. Supreme Court strikes down Biden's student loan forgiveness program, dated June 30th, 2023, so almost 12 months ago. The Supreme Court told Biden he could not do his loan forgiveness program. And here we are in 2024, and Biden is basically giving the Supreme Court the finger and doing it anyway. This is what we've arrived at in our country. We no longer care about the law. We no longer care about ethics. We no longer care about justice. We no longer care about fairness. It's all about doing the things you want to do and ignoring the law and ignoring ethics and ignoring fairness. It's just stunning. You know, before I started doing my channel, I actually had arrived at a point in my life where I was so discouraged that I basically, I basically gave up. That's what I did. I gave up. I said, you know, there's no hope for this country. There isn't because it's become so corrupt and it's so perverted and it's so far off from what it was created to be that there's no turning back. Now, I know that God can cause create miracles. I know God can do that. There's no question in my mind that he can do that. But... There's another side to God. If you know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, God will give up on a place if he thinks it's irredeemable. And I actually felt that our country was irredeemable. Now, I'm not so sure. Uh, maybe there is still hope. Maybe there's not. I don't know. But, <laughs> uh, and one last thing that I want to give to you today. This, this is a busy news day. Uh, it's a series of articles, five of them, titled The Hunting of Sidney Powell. Now, if you don't know who Sidney Powell is, she is an attorney based in Dallas who has a stellar reputation and has written books about the corruption in the Justice Department. And in the 2020 election, she filed lawsuits in four different states uh, trying to uh, get information on the record about the frauds that were taking place in the elections. And this series of articles is about what the uh, opposing side has done to her. They have assaulted her with, with lawsuits. This is the 
this is the method that uh, politicians now use to go after their their the people that they are disagreeing with is they file lawsuits against them and they try to break them and it, it's working to some degree uh, um, what's his name uh, shoot Rudy Giuliana Ani has had to file for bankruptcy because of all the lawsuits that have been filed against him. Sidney Powell, to her credit, is fighting every single one of them. And she has won several big ones. She got the law changed in Texas so that it's no longer possible for people from other states to file ethics complaints about lawyers. And it's no longer possible for people who aren't even clients of an attorney to file ethics complaints against them. So that's a great change in the state of Texas, but she's also had uh, ethics complaints filed in other states which are controlled by the other party. And so no telling how those will turn out. But uh, this is an interesting series of articles. If you want to understand the term lawfare, L-A-W-F-A-R-E, this is a good primer on what lawfare is, how it works, and the goal of it. And the goal of lawfare is to is to financially and and uh, emotionally and uh, every other way break a person so that they can no longer fight. So as I always do, I'll put all of these links in the description, and you're welcome to read them on your own if you want. And I pray for you. I pray that you will have an abundant life that you will be healthy, that you'll live a long time, that God will keep you safe from harm, and that you will be born again, if you're not already. I also pray that God will do the same for every person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.